Hello my friends, Jacob is here once again, and so are you, and you, and you! What, no one's gonna say nothing about my hood? That's right, I'm trying to look like a Jedi, because I've been watching Bobo Fett. <laughs> Deuce the Force! Oh. Okay, let's get back into it, because I have a serious thing to talk about. A lot of people have been sending me a lot of things. That's right, things to talk about on the program. I'm very grateful! You know what I'm getting a lot of shouted at me again and again and again? The honking of the horns in Canada. It's like the uh, the walls of Jericho. It's the walls of Jericho. The, the convoy for freedom. You should talk about it. That's what it feels like because I got so many. It's like, talk about it. Talk about it, Jacob. When Danielle got this for me, I knew I was going to use it a lot. It's fun. No, but people, yeah, they sent they sent it to me. And I gotta tell you, because I'm a meatball, right? <laughs> I'm a meatball, I don't catch on. Turns out, I guess somehow, yeah, I guess you could say this, like like things I've said before on the program, you know, and then they happen. I said that this the, 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 the sounding of the horns were gonna happen, and I said that uh, a group of people were, yeah, I like literally did. I did a whole thing about Gideon. Uh, it's a video that I shared almost exactly seven months ago, okay? Almost exactly, it's very strange. I talked about uh, a group of individuals that you wouldn't believe, you wouldn't think, you wouldn't that all of a sudden that they would gather together and uh, I'm gonna get into the story. It's strange, okay? But it is connected to this, uh, this freedom convoy, which seems to be working okay seems to be now i'm not like some goofball who's just gonna be like oh yeah because i went back i watched the video and i'm gonna play the video at the end even if you've seen it you should see it again because it's it's bizarre to me how i was like scared to talk about the things i was talking about i was nervous and i went through this and then i end up doing it and it's this beautiful thing and i believe it's connected to this i really do and why do I believe it's connected to this? Well, because everybody tells me that they, they were calling this, they were calling this, hang on a second, that this was the same as the, uh, you know, the walls of Jericho and that everybody was gonna be honking the horns and uh, that they did this for a certain amount of time. As the video goes, you're gonna learn the story of Gideon in a much more profound way, but it is strange. Okay, so let me just hit this, Pastor Henry, Hildebrand, I guess, addressed the mass of gathering, and he is, was inspired by the honking horns. He compared the convoy to the biblical story of Jericho. The story of Jericho, you know, is a walled city. Okay, I'll give you a little background. You know what Jericho means? It's like the moon. Okay, you know how you see the moon all the time? The moon, everything's about the moon. Talking about the moon boom that's coming soon. Right? A lot of things with the moon. That's what Jericho means. It's moon. A moon is symbolic of kind of like the uh, the intellect of man, if you will. It's not the light. It's not the source of the light, but it can reflect the light. And that's what everybody worships, right? They all like, they, they worship the, uh, they worship the moon. They're big fans of the moon. That's what Jericho means. But so the walls, they came down with the blasting of the trumpet. It had to do with faith. You, you walk around these walls once. And the whole point of this story was the fact that, you know, God moves in mysterious, wonderful ways. And you, you never expect it. You never expect it. But I wasn't really like 100% on board with the whole walls of Jericho thing because I get it. It's a defensive city. But basically, they ended up plundering everything. They had closed the gates. They made things very, very uh, difficult to get in because of the Israelites on the outside. And uh, the Israelites, they, they, they never really had 
you know, battle in big cities. They didn't really know how to handle it. So, uh, you know, Joshua is, uh, tells them what to do and then they do it. But, so I find it strange, but I'm thinking, that's a little, the story feels a little bit more like Gideon. And then I remember, I told everybody that within, you know, I said just a little more than a couple of months, like everything was about to change. I said that, that, that people were going to start sounding the horns. I basically said that Gideon's armies needs to be woken up. What does it set you free from? The lies. And the lie is being spread everywhere. But we're going to see the power of God act. We're going to see over the next, I say, couple of months or so, we're going to see the power of God act in a mighty way. And now, so, so why I'm talking about this is because you see that here we have this, you know, this border that's going on right now between Canada and the United States and trade has been, it's been like shut down and like all the big, all the big wigs are stressing out, you know, they're all stressing out because of uh, commerce. A lot of commerce goes through there. Can't really, uh, they can't really handle it. They're talking about how production is going to stop. This is a big deal. This is a big deal that just what, what, you know, uh, Trudeau is saying is just a small group of people. Doesn't matter how big it is. Doesn't really, size is not what, what matters. It's, it's the move of God. And then here we are, not more than a couple of months after I did that video, like I said, where I'm talking about freedom is going to be shouted. People are going to be blowing their horns. 300 men against the mighty army. Gideon was willing to uh, throw it down. Moses was willing to throw it down. Abraham was willing to throw it down. Jacob is willing to throw it down. And just trust God, because I'm not doing anything wrong here. And in the grand scheme of things, what are you going to do? I kept my job for a reason, right? So 300 men. So what they do is they go up on the mountains. They surround the enemy camp. And uh, they all have torches, and he, they light the torches, they have these clay jars, and they put the torches, they put the clay jars over the torches so no one can see the fire. And then he says, when I blast my trumpet, you're going to blast all your trumpets, and then you're going to show everybody the torches. And it was like, God used a psychological operation on them, turn the tides on them, let their fear work in them. So Gideon blew the trumpet, the mighty man of valor who was so scared, hiding, hiding, like I've been hiding, like I'm sure you've been hiding. Blow the trumpet, sound the alarm. This is the day that we're in. Help people to return to God, to repent. He sounds the alarm, he blows the trumpet. Everybody else blows the trumpet. They smash the clay jars, they hold up their torches high. The army wakes up, it echoes off of the mountain. It sounds so much greater than it really is. And they get so scared, they start killing each other in the dark. They don't even know what they're doing. They're just swinging swords left and right. And God gave them victory. Not with a lot, not with power, with faith. 300, that's all it took. It's just, I think it's very coincidental. And you know what the word convoy means, by the way? It means escorted protection. Uh, like it's a, it's, a, it's a group of people, like Gideon had these 300 people, you're gonna find out why. The story I think is very, it's very, like, like I, I say on the channel, if you don't know that these stories, they play out again and again and again. In the book of Ecclesiastes says, there's nothing new under the sun. Whatever has been will be again. So we have these stories that remind us of what's going on today. And we see all of these characters rising up. We see all these stories playing out and it's happening right now again. So I think the parallel with Jericho and the walls coming down and them sounding the shofar, don't you find it strange? that I got my shofar, I got my horn. This is what they would blow. This is what they would blow. And, and it was like a psychological operation. It was so loud and it, it terrified them. You're gonna find out in the story of Gideon. So much so that they started killing each other. There was no, they didn't even have to fight. They didn't even have to fight because the fight was already won. God delivered them. That's the reason why it wasn't 33,000. It wasn't 3,000. It was only 300 that went with it. It's, so it doesn't matter if it's a small group of, of truckers that are standing up and thank God for the people that are standing up because what's going on in the world I said was wrong 
You know, we believe that, that people should be able to pursue liberty. They should be able to provide for their family. We know there's something else going on. And so we know that, you know, God had to act. So I was telling everybody, it's not going to be long. You're going to see. And then here we are. It's just, it's just very, very cool. Now, do you think that that's, you know, is that enough for me to go on? Well, no, because so I'm at the gym and I think to myself, well, Lord, you know, maybe there's a Gideon. Is there a, the name Gideon anywhere? Can I find Gideon trucking or Gideon? So I'm like, look, and I look online. For, so I type in Gideon and I type in, you know, truckers or freedom convoy. And what do I get? One of the first people to speak out, <laughs> one of the first people to be interviewed in Canada for the star.com. It's the biggest online news site. Okay, and it was just like five days ago. His name was Gideon Providence. You know what Providence is? Providence is something that God has set forth that's it's, it's, it's divine. something that God said is going to happen. It's a plan. Gideon Providence. Gideon is a mighty man of valor. Gideon is, it's, a, it's an important name. It means one who cuts down. So you have like a, a corrupt tree. It would be like Gideon's the person who cuts down that corrupt tree. Gideon was scared. You're going to find out. Was scared. Providence, God's protection. Gideon Providence is the guy who uh, he speaks out and he says, look, I just want people to have a right to not have the whatever it's called, you know, the wackadoo, <laughs> and not have their livelihood threatened, said Providence, who was wrapped in a Canadian flag, walking down Bloor Street West. The 29-year-old who lives in Toronto said he also drove to Ottawa last weekend to protest there. A lot of people sent me the flag, too. <laughs> it looks like the 666. Oh, I gotta tell you, isn't this a great story? Aren't you all glad to be subscribers here? This is fun stuff. Wait till you watch the end. You need, even if you saw this video, you need to watch it because I call out a lot of stuff that I think is gonna, like at the time when I did the video, it all, it wasn't looking good. But I said, it's gonna start looking good. And it's looking better, don't you think? I wanna blow the horn. I do, I do. Because we see, we see that a lot of these mandates are being rolled back. We see that it's working. It's working, it's got people freaking out. It's got people really freaking out. Now I make this clear so that nobody mistakes what I'm saying. I never will support unlawful, chaotic, damaging behavior. I'm not for it. I'm for doing the right thing. I'm for standing up for our rights peacefully, doing things the right way, the godly way. So if the horns be blasting, as they did in the days of Jericho, and if the horns of uh, Gideon are heard, which we now see Gideon's sword being shown in Boba Fett's last episode, which I think is very cool and very symbolic, but I, I have to be clear, peaceful protest is a right. But if it's not peaceful and law-abiding, it's not right. If it isn't godly, don't take part. I have to make that clear because I got to protect what God has given me so that we can continue on. Walls of Jericho are coming down, right? But really I see it as Gideon's army that has risen. And the blast of the trumpet. It's so, just so... Now, you want to hear even weirder? Let's take a look at this story for a second. Why this is all so cool is because the video that I did was because there was a fragment that was, it was a, a shattered pot, which has to do with the story of Gideon. And so when I saw that that biblical discovery was made, I knew that that's what was hopefully coming down the road, waking up that army of God. This is uh, Judges um, chapter six about Gideon. Now, before, Chapter 7 is where you get into the real huge story, and uh, you're, I'm going to explain all that too. And it's just, 
it's worth it. So I hope you, you all stick around. I'm going to stick around in the live chat too. I hope you watch the whole thing. It's only like another 20 something minutes, but man, knowing what we know now and seeing that to see how God orchestrates everything. It's just, it's just unbelievable. So the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord. These are God's people and they did the wrong thing. So you know what God did? <laughs> so for seven years, he declared a judgment on them and gave them into the hands of the Midianites. Now, you know, I talk about that, that, uh, those two eclipses. And, uh, I told you about the judgment that was coming within this seven year period of time. And I talked to you about Jacob's trouble that started around December 14th. And we know that was when the first wah, wah was given out and a lot of trouble started right for Jacob and for all of you. Don't worry. We're coming out of it. Big changes in leadership are coming. Big changes. I'm going to give you another one too. And see, the problem is I throw these out here and then sometimes I forget. I've been hiding away a laptop for a long time. And thumbnail after thumbnail, you'll see Biden holding a laptop and all this stuff. Because I had a dream years ago about this laptop that was shot up. I, I talk about it on the Actually, you know what? Let me just play this for you right now. So this is my, my website, jacobisrael.com. You should go and subscribe. This is an essay I wrote back in uh, 2015, where I was talking about, you know, it wouldn't be very long towards we were gonna see flooding, earthquakes, fire. I had this terrible dream, okay? And in this dream, I saw a building that I thought was this. I couldn't think of a domed holy site, but as time has gone on, because of course walls were torn down and people stormed this place, I learned that perhaps this dream that I had in 2015 was about what happened on January 6th. Thousands of people were there, they were all, and there were gates that were set up and everybody crashed the gates. There was also this huge statue that I saw, which now reminds me very much of, of Donald Trump, which is strange. Now, this is where the dream got weird. I had a, a reader of mine who was carrying a briefcase, opened it up and inside it looked very much like a bright red bomb. It, uh, but the man, was holding it they said it was a laptop and they referred to it as a bomb you know to get high with disguised as a laptop okay now this is where it gets a little strange okay because we know there is a laptop today that everybody is talking about and we know that this guy has a uh, you know as a thing for bunks you know so it's just a little coincidental a little more coincidental is the fact that in the dream i was told it's the new sussman and what was strange about this was there was actually a laptop that was shot up in Israel earlier, uh, Lily Sussman, because they thought that it was, you know, a bomb, even though it wasn't. It was just a student's laptop. I've hid this laptop in thumbnails for a while now with Biden holding it, President Biden. But what's strange is that it was called the Sussman. Now, today's news was quite shocking for me. Who is Michael Sussman? Okay, so here we have, we have the new Sussman, and uh, the new Sussman, which by the way, I remember thinking in the dream, I was worried there'd be some kind of an attack and I woke up, okay, and the attack happened, they say. <laughs> it was whatever it was on January 6th. Bright red, that could be a symbol of, you know, communism. I don't know, could be China, could be nothing. But it is quite coincidental that here we have a laptop that could change everything and uh, connected to, and this is just, I mean, this is news that's going on right now. And we have this guy, Michael Sussman, Hillary Clinton's lawyer, who we found out was paid a tech for, to spy on Donald Trump. So we have a lot of this is very strange. A lot of this is very strange. And that's why I think big things are about to go down. A big shakeup is coming. So that gives you a whole little thing. Like, I think that that kooky dream that got me to talk about how everything was coming to, I think that's what all of this was. And it, the laptop was a big deal. The new Sussman, the big deal. It was like, it was in the dream, it was called a bong, not a, you know, with a B, but with a G, a B O N G, you know, like if you were getting high. The laptop bong sounds a lot like, you know, the laptop. That's in question. They tried to destroy it, but I think this is gonna be a big deal. You're gonna see it. 
I've been saying it for a long time. I think this is the year when the big shakeup happens. But once again, I don't know what I'm talking about. I just kind of go off of these feelings and then things happen and I'm like, oh, didn't I say something? Because it's supposed to encourage you to have trust in God and not worry about you gotta, you know, they didn't have to worry about using their own hands and using weapons and all this stuff. All they had to do was trust in God and honk their horns, right? And that's what's happening right now. It's beautiful. Because the power of Midian, Midian, do you know what Midian means? Strife creates anxiety in people. Strife creates division. Strife. Midian. Doesn't that sound like the world system today? Okay. Midian was so oppressive, the Israelites prepared shelters for themselves. They, they were sheltering in place. That's how oppressive it got. The Israelites were sheltering in place. Does that sound familiar? Okay. Whenever the Israelites planted their crops, the Midianites, the Amalekites, and other Eastern people invaded the country. They camped on the land. They ruined all the crops. They made all the food terrible. They put a bunch of GMO poison in them. Sound familiar? Nothing new under the sun, I keep telling everybody. They camped on the land. They ruined the crops all the way to Gaza, and they didn't even spare a living thing for Israel, nor the sheep, nor the cattle, nor the donkeys. They didn't care. They were horrible people. They came up with their livestock in their tents like swarms of locusts. It was impossible to count them or their camels. They invaded the land to ravage it and they ravaged it. Midian so impoverished the Israelites that the Israelites finally cried out to God for help. I told everybody to cry out to God before this even started. For years going into it, I told everybody to cry out to God and everybody was like, you're crazy. Things are gonna get better. It's a new day. Yeah, okay, and then here we are now. Are you crying out to God now? Well, you cry out to God, guess what happens? He delivers you. He delivers you. And I said it wasn't going to be long. I threw it down. And I said, how many of you are going to throw it down? I said, freedom is coming. How many of you are ready? So when the Israelites cried out to the Lord because of Midian, he sent them a prophet who said this. This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. I brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. I rescued you from the hands of the Egyptians. I delivered you from the hands of your oppressors. I drove them out before you and gave you their land. Okay? Look, look, we started the United States, right? We were given a new land. We became prosperous. And what happened? What happened? Same thing that happened back in Jericho's day. They built the walls back up again, you know? And you're not supposed to do that. You're not supposed to do that. When God says, get be done with something, don't ever go back to it. I drove them out before you. I gave you their land. I said, I'm the Lord your God. Do not worship the gods of the Amorites in the land you live. Don't worship the stars. Do you worship the stars? Do you care what they say in their little tweets? Just follow me on Twitter, All right? Follow me on Twitter and Telegram so you get notified all the links are in the description. Hook up with me. Let's build, you know? Let's build. This, this is the coming together. This is the gathering together of the saints, right? The tribes of Israel. We've been scattered as the, you know, straw in the wind. We've been scattered. Now we're waking up. We're finally crying out to God, and God sent us a Savior. God sent us a Savior. It's Christ. What do you think this is all about? Christ in you. The hope of glory. I'm the Lord your God. Don't worship the gods of the Amorites. So the angel of the Lord came, sat down under the oak that belonged to Joash, where his son Gideon was threshing wheat in a wine press to keep it from the Midianites. To keep the truth of wheat, the seed, the seed, to keep the truth of God. He was threshing the wheat. You're going to see that, it, you know, you're going to see because the wheat and the tares, it's like, it's like he was threshing wheat. He was, he was, he was uh, trying to get people out of their comfort zone. So that that seed would would be would break free from that hard shell, and you're going to find out the rest of the story of Gideon very very shortly. But this this thing, this whole thing that I said months ago, right? I said months ago was coming to a head, 
it's uh I'm I'm pretty blown away. Now once again, I don't I didn't I didn't say to you, I think a bunch of truckers are gonna come together, you know, but I did say the virus is not gonna be a threat anymore. They're gonna have to stop these things. I said because I spoke it in faith. I said that things were gonna mutate down, right? I spoke it in faith. You were here when Omicron first came out, right? What did I say? I said it's gonna be this it's gonna be the thing that delivers us. I said freedom was coming. That was like seven months ago but it's gonna get so much better, I promise you. So, enjoy this um, this video. If you've seen it before, watch it again. Most likely you're new to the channel, so it's gonna feel like a new video. I enjoy it, because you're gonna, you're gonna like the fact that when I did this video, what was going on at the time was scary. It was scary. We thought people, people, people like that are peers of mine were saying everybody's gonna be in these camps and stuff like that. They still think it's gonna happen, but God can act. God can use all of us. Did you hear that? God can use you. Yes, you. So honk your horn. <laughs> Unless there's an ordinance. I think they can't for like 10 days or something. They can't honk their horns anymore. But it's interesting. What do they call it? The honkening? All right. Listen, enjoy the rest of the show. I'm really, I'm really jazzed up. And I'm grateful to so many of you. You sent me all this info about Jericho and and uh, how it was being compared to this. But this is even cooler, I think. This is because the story of Gideon is so spot on. It's a psychological war. That's what happens. It's a psychological war. It wasn't that many. It didn't take that many, but it seemed like a lot. And it was loud. <laughs> All right, I love each and every one of you. Enjoy the rest of the show.